Hi everyone, welcome. Looks like we've got ourselves a little visitor here in, in the older bin. Or I mean, no, actually, you know what? I usually have the older bin here as like position one from your point of view and then work my way to the younger bins. But right now I've actually got them um, in changed locations. So we've got the older bin here, the 305 day old system. Today only on this side. <laughs> with the younger system on this side 270 and the only reason I oriented these two systems was because um, I want to fade into a little clip that I want to share with you guys and it's really going back to the last feeding 10 days ago when we laid down a couple of these coffee filters laid out flat unfolded to become our feeding zone indicators sprinkled with worm chow and what you see that happens over the course of 10 days is pretty interesting. A whole lot happens in terms of breakdown of the feeding zone indicators as a result of the worm chow being sprinkled onto it. Just trying to get these little guys whatever. We could always just take these somewhat damp things that the worms would prefer to hang out in on um, and position them in a way that they're going to stay nice and damp and cool. And maybe even a little dark for these little guys. <laughs> Over the next few minutes, whatever little guys that got stranded on these pieces of paper. We'll put this damp side down on top of the whole stack over there. Giving them a spot that holds its moisture. So... This is where we are now today after placing those feeding zone indicators over where we last fed. These were full feed, uh, coffee filters nibbled away, but like I meant uh, reference to earlier, it is interesting to see what happens on a daily basis in a system like this. Something I normally don't take the time to check in on, but I made a distinct effort over the past 10 days to do exactly that here. So let's just take a quick look to see going back little flashback in time to that 10 days ago now we've um, been observing the progress of how things look when you put it out onto the feeding zone indicator in this case the worm chow that I showed a moment ago and it does sure seem to me like it's the springtails that are responsible for all that deterioration of the coffee filters so leaving you with pretty much what you see here and yeah those springtails sure do no, do a number on that uh, worm chow and on the paper, but as you can kind of see, the worm chows weren't, uh, <laughs> the worm chows, the springtails were not all over the paper anymore. They were apparently back down in the bedding where the moisture and the food are, I guess. So I was, um, you know, Definitely curious to see how that plays out, and I've seen other channels do similar sort of day-by-day -day accounts of what's happening, and I thought we would do the same here. And I, you know, I liked it so much, I figured I would just do a complete repeat of the whole thing once again. We're going to do the same thing of reusing that piece of newspaper that was sitting out here. It's all damp. We're going to use that to wrap up their food, and their food's going to once again consist of cucumbers from my yard, and this is the last of it. Everything I was able to pull off the plant prior to the freeze coming in a couple days. These were all obviously things that would not be eaten. Um, but the worms are going to love it. And I got my little knife so we can split this tomato in two. And guess what? Replacements for the feeding zone indicators and my worm chow. So yes, we're doing the whole thing one more time. I think before though we head over to the feeding edge curious to see how this stuff out here on the opposite side looks. Like last time, it's pretty worm free. Actually, there was a little handful there a moment ago that I excavated from quite down low and it did seem to have a good number of worms hanging out in that one particular location. This stuff, you know, as it's not been fed now for three weeks, I think we're in a pretty good position here to Go ahead and let this stuff dry out. I'm even wondering about leaving a, a newspaper covering out here. 
Yeah, you know, I think we'll stick to keeping the newspaper out here, even though, uh, even though we could certainly let this stuff dry. I don't want to crowd the worms out of this stuff. If they want to stay in here, let them. <laughs> but I did promise myself at least aerating this uh, material and at least inspecting how it's looking. It all looks really nice. Still got a good number of worms hanging out in it, but I do wonder if my aerating it will potentially help it dry a little. Almost makes me wonder if I should come back almost on a daily basis and do the same and just give more and more of the material that would otherwise be trapped down low a chance at sitting out on the surface and kicking off a little bit of its moisture, letting it air dry over time. That's the thing, if you could spend a good bit of time with all of your bins every day, that would be great, but I kind of choose to just spend a good bit of time with a bin per day instead of just a little bit of time with all the systems, although it does seem like some sort of a periodic rotation of the material that you'd like to see drying would be um, definitely something that could help speed the process along, I would think. So let's go ahead and prepare to give them their feeding over on the opposite edge now, which I've now been considering for the past three weeks officially in my tracking spreadsheet as migration. So originally we thought about considering this as foraging. Look at that, we've still got pretty good sized chunks remaining here of the cucumber from last time. And you know the, the main difference was that the first time we threw cucumber in here three weeks ago on the first edge feeding, that stuff had been frozen. Then there was no sign of it after those first 11 days. And then on this go around, after, yeah, okay, it's only 10 days this time, only one day's difference, but considering they did away with what I believe was an entire cucumber versus what they've done here with only half of a cucumber, because you might remember these two bins, they actually split a single cucumber that was chopped into chunks. And, you know, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of freezing the food that's going to be given to the worms because it really does seem like that freezing and thawing process is definitely seems to be helping as far as the um, acceleration of the breakdown of the materials. Something tells me if all of these chunks of um, cucumber had been frozen before being placed in here, they would they'd be gone by by this time. That's just my gut feeling on this. I really am very surprised to see that there are actually, um, you know leftovers in this many of them for that matter huh, interesting very interesting kind of makes me wish I had frozen the stuff I'm giving them today but today's feeding is also just straight from the garden to the worms and something I don't even remember if we bumped into last time or if we did we didn't spend much time on it it's the cork cork that's been going for many years now and this other unusual object was the stem of a pumpkin. So, it just seemed to me if I were to probe a little bit more, we might bump into one or two more scraps of leftover bedding or food even. Food, man, this much leftover food is really making me question giving them more, but, you know, I'm okay with it. We're going to go for it. <laughs> we're just going to give them more. So yeah, we've got a pretty good size spot for them over there. Let's open this one up too. Wow. Here I'm seeing what appears to be a lot more springtails all over the food. But same story. Leftovers. Big chunks of leftover cucumber. Very surprising. So I'm so used to freezing everything. And everything going pretty quick. I very, very rarely see leftovers certain things obviously do you know take a long time to break down and those will just keep showing up as leftovers when they're expected to but something like cucumber in a worm bin <laughs> it's unheard of kind of making you wonder is there some sort of an issue hopefully not hopefully everything's okay i mean there is a lot of springtail action a little bit more than I'm used to seeing. Probably a lot more than the worms would prefer, too. 
There again, I really don't know. I can't tell you what the worms like or dislike. <laughs> well, I could sort of guess on some of them, some of those sort of things, but you can't really just outright ask them. All right. I think we're in good shape. So, like we did last time, we're sticking to the reuse principle of giving them bedding that they're going to really enjoy and stuff like an old feeding zone indicator or two and even some of this old top covering newspaper for which I've got a replacement this stuff can go right down into the feeding zone and sort of be there as their their bedding supplement for now it's not a lot you know a little stingy on the bedding here but at this point I'm trying to limit the amount of leftovers and scraps I see in my systems kind of making you wonder why are you adding more stuff then maybe just leave what's there to go I don't know the other side of that same thinking is that well if it does take this long for this material to get to the point where they're finally going to eat it tomorrow so why give them food then well the stuff I'm giving them today is also going to require a lot of time to get to that point so might as well get it in here and let that process begin sooner the better on when they can actually eat it if they can't eat it for whatever reason right now then you know let's help if we can okay I'll tell you mango seed coming along good I'm resisting the urge to just want to crush it I'm sure it'll go really easily if I wanted to it just seems so fragile and falling apart but let's proceed getting these little guys fed kind of makes me wonder how the next 10 days are going to proceed if they've only gotten this far with those cukes that they got last time you know how's even more of the same sort of stuff going to go might go slow I don't know we'll have to see I did my best to pick every last little bit off the vine out there with freezing coming in the next few days I'm gonna have to return and do the same with my tomato and peppers as well but here's a tomato which was probably you know okay if I were to just cut away some of the nasty bits of it but I got a couple really nice ones out there right now that I don't need to worry about you know carving through one that's perhaps a little bit imperfect so we can share let the worms enjoy a little bit of the stuff too. Tomato is also another one of their yummy favorites, if you ask me. I don't know. I mean, I can't ask them. But just based on the way they react when you give it to them, they do seem to enjoy the tomato too. So, once again, a nice feeding. I do wonder if maybe a little bit more bedding would be nice. But, you know, I do want to limit the amount of, um, like, shrapnel little bits of bedding that's just floating around out here not getting broken down perhaps I should have actually made an effort to pick larger pieces out when I was tilling things around over here but I did not so that's fine you know last time something I did contemplate doing and I thought that I might actually um, kind of get back on track with that idea was to come in here not to do a little daily film filming or daily time lapse to see how things are doing but rather um, to come out here and take care of getting some some of these springtails out of here by actually um, actually coming in here after this thing's been treated with some worm chow and left underneath a piece of plastic to go for a few days it's going to get mobbed with it's going to get mobbed with the springtails and while they're all out here on this piece of paper, I can do what I had originally thought I'd be doing, which is to actually pull them out and shake them off. Because, um, you know, let me show you something. See here, something I did each and every day when I came down here to film that little clip of the 
Springtail's eating the worm chow. I was to also collect up as many as I could of these little guys. And just, um, you know, seems like they get stranded someplace. They can't really go anywhere. They're just there, and then they dry out, and then they just start piling up. So in the beginning, it seemed like I was collecting many more towards the end, perhaps not so many. So I think doing something like that is trying to expand this collection <laughs> by coming in here and shaking off as many springtails as I can off of these top coating pieces of paper. But I don't want to coat them like I did last time. Last time I piled it thick. But here I'm thinking be really sparse with this stuff so that when I go I can really give the paper a good shake and get as many of them off of it as I can um, without also dropping off a whole bunch of um, dropping off a whole bunch of worm chow in the process of just trying to shake off you know springtails so I did have a um, couple replacement pieces of paper to put out here as the new sacrificial ones that sort of get the soaking from being combined with plastic top coverings and that allows us to hang on to our nice ornamental autumn top coverings that have the coffee nice hot coffee on us on an autumn day and even little jack-o-lantern in here so so there we got the halloween spirit with us here so that's it for our check-in with our now thir third week of horizontal migration going on with a third feeding to support that process so that's how I see it now I'm seeing these as systems in the process of horizontal migration clearly we could probably come off of here and let this even air out and dry out more but I'm not in the much of a hurry so it doesn't matter we'll just play it by ear but for now we'll stick with top coverings I don't know what do you think do you agree <laughs> all right everyone that's it for the video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now